May 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 16 from the New Testament. He also came to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple named Timothy was there, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was Greek. As they went through the towns, they passed on the decrees that had been decided on by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the Gentile believers to obey. So the churches were being strengthened in the faith and were increasing in number every day. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been prevented by the Holy Spirit from speaking the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to do this. So they passed through Mysia and went down to Troas. A vision appeared to Paul during the night. A Macedonian man was standing there urging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul saw the vision, we attempted immediately to go over to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We put out to sea from Troas and sailed a straight course to Samothrace, the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of that district of Macedonia, a Roman colony. We stayed in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the city gate to the side of the river, where we thought there would be a place of prayer, and we sat down and began to speak to the women who had assembled there. A woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, a God-fearing woman, listened to us. The Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying. After she and her household were baptized, she urged us, If you consider me to be a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. Now as we were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl met us who had a spirit that enabled her to foretell the future by supernatural means. She brought her owners a great profit by fortune telling. She followed behind Paul and us and kept crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued to do this for many days, but Paul became greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out of her at once. But when her owners saw their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are throwing our city into confusion. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us to accept or practice, since we are Romans. The crowd joined the attack against them, and the magistrates tore the clothes off Paul and Silas and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had beaten them severely, they threw them into prison and commanded the jailer to guard them securely. Receiving such orders, he threw them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the rest of the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly a great earthquake occurred, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors flew open and the bonds of all the prisoners came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, because he assumed the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out loudly, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. Calling for lights, the jailer rushed in and fell down trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, along with all those who were in his house. At that hour of the night he took them and washed their wounds, Then he and all his family were baptized right away. The jailer brought them into his house and set food before them, and he rejoiced greatly that he had come to believe in God, together with his entire household. 
At daybreak, the magistrate sent their police officers, saying, Release those men. The jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent orders to release you, so come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to the police officers, They had us beaten in public without a proper trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and they threw us in prison. And now they want to send us away secretly? Absolutely not. They themselves must come and escort us out. The police officers reported these words to the magistrates. They were frightened when they heard Paul and Silas were Roman citizens and came and apologized to them. After they brought them out, they asked them repeatedly to leave the city. When they came out of the prison, they entered Lydia's house, and when they saw the brothers, they encouraged them and then departed. God, thank you for giving us the spirit, not of fear and timid, timidity, but of strength, your strength. I kind of laugh a little bit every time I read the story about Paul, uh, not just in his strength of standing up to the demon and the girl. Here she was praising them and actually helping them with their marketing efforts, uh, but it, doing it in the wrong way of how people would perceive them being in that town. Um, so Paul stands up for for what they believe in and what is right. Uh, but more importantly, I just kind of laugh at the end part where they're beaten. Their clothes are ripped across their bodies. Um, they're probably starving at this point. Um, they've survived an earthquake. And now they've been offered an opportunity to to leave jail, to leave town. And Paul's like, nope, <laughs> we're not leaving. You come and acknowledge what you've done here um, so that my God's church is pure. My God's church is innocent. My God's church doesn't look like uh, how you perceived us in the town square uh, by beating us the other day. I just love Paul's tenacity. <laughs> And a little bit of his honoriness. I know when we get into his letters to Timothy, it does talk about how you, God, didn't give us the spirit of fear or timidity, but you give us the power and spirit of strength. Strength to speak out when we should, discernment when we shouldn't. (laughs) Kind of an important one. That we would fear you more than we would fear people. And I love these stories of Paul and how we get to see that in action. Of him making the right choices at the right time. Saying the right words. Always, always going back to what it is that you want and don't want them to do. And he knows it's from you. I mean, you ask them to walk 400 miles to get to their next place. 400 miles. It's not like Paul's going to choose that on his own. It's sort of like the daily video Bible. It's an amazing project and I love, love working on it, but I wouldn't have come up with this on my own. Um, Every single one of the videos that we, that make it to the website, it takes about two total hours of processing time to even get it to the website. Um, Times two every day, (laughs) times 760 videos. I wouldn't have come up with all that work. But you did, God, because you wanted this project done and you figured out a way uh, to put people onto this project who've helped with it and done amazing things. You've given me the strength on those days where I just can't record (laughs) one more minute and you've given me the strength to go on and do that. It's just amazing when you want something done, you're going to figure out a way for it to happen and happen in grand fashion, including through earthquakes. God, thank you for not giving us a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead giving us your strength. In your son's name I pray. Amen.